Hi, this is vlog number 21, uh, tracking my attempt to achieve a double bodyweight squat at the age of 43, hopefully in April. Um, I say hopefully, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, so a little bit of a, a, a challenging week, I think it's every week, but um, external to me, the gyms I would normally use, which is I've got access to two at the minute, one at work and one, one I use at home, um, we're both kind of out of commission for a week, they've both been developed and, and, and uh, decorated for for the last part of the last week, so that's why um, I didn't post at the end of last week, and um, yeah, so it's really kind of affected my ability to train over the last week, um, so I, I we can access squat rack it's hard to get better at squatting but um i've managed to get some data together for this week so i have a little chat about um how that was gone in the last episode i said i'd kind of uh anticipated it in some kind of overreaching and, and a bit of fatigue in, in squatting and then literally the next day i went into to do a squat session felt pretty good um which was unusual because i didn't really feel that great um all of it to that, but got moving. Yeah, I felt okay. Two two session two sets in, feeling a bit better, and then did another uh, set of one hundred and twenty for five, um, which has been a bit of a, a yo yo weight for me at the minute. Um, so when I first started this this phase, nowhere near close to doing it, and then um, midway through, yeah, was doing it like two, three, four sessions in the spin. Uh, I'm really happy with that. Again, it felt like a, a threshold moment, and then. Like I say, last week I, I posted about hitting a, a wall and really struggled with that. Um, and then this week, um, I felt I could do it again, but I'd, again, I'd, I'm bouncing like some weeks I can do five, and next week it's two and three repetitions. So, yeah, I just need to kind of keep hammering on that one and, and see if I can just consistently break that 120 mark and, and be able to do it more uh, more consistently. So what I've got in terms of, of, of data is, just to show you a little bit of information about how inconsistent um, load velocities can be in, in helping understand what you're doing. So this is tracking the first set I do. So uh, five set, five repetitions of 100 kilograms and I measure the velocity. Um, and across this, this kind of phase, you can start to see at the beginning it was it was way down. Then it got the second time I did it, it got really good. Then it dropped down and and peaked and troughed along the way, and that's consistently been the message in this this phase. It's peaks and troughs of of, of being um, good and bad. But actually, the, those lower sessions, I've actually managed to do 120 for five on some of these low days, and some of these days where I move the first set, set faster, I've not been able to achieve it. So just because the first set goes well does not guarantee that I'll lift more in the heavier sets, which is really frustrating because you want a nice linear relationship. You want to be able to do. Yep, the first set is going well, the second set will go well, and the third set will go well. And that hasn't been the case. Um, so it's just one of the kind of anomalies you might find, in it, and it's okay, I suppose, just to kind of go, yep, just got th what I thought was going to be a good day today turned out not to be a great day. But equally, you might do the first set, and it just feels awful. You just might take a bit longer to get warmed up on that particular day. And actually, by the time you get to your third set, you, you're firing, and, uh, and it feels good. So it's just kind of... Sucking it and see. Let's get best guess, trial and error, um, and throw the science book out the window. So I suppose the the, the, the thing I take from that, that particular graph is I'm on a bit of an upward trend. I've had no dips for a while there. Uh, hopefully I can continue to to, to um, keep on pushing that and yeah, get that first set faster and faster. And hopefully that will transfer into to be able to lift that 120 um, consistently. And then then hopefully add, add some load to that as well. Um, but in other news, um, I tracked clean shrug pulls um, as my kind of second main lift. So that's on, on like a pull day. Um, and I'm starting to see some progressions in that. So like, it's not all bad news. I'm not kind of falling foul of, of, of getting no benefits whatsoever from, from all training. It just seems to be that the, the squat is what I'm gearing up to measure. Uh, but in terms of movement velocity, so... In July, I was like pulling 95 kilos for 10 repetitions, um, and that was going relatively slowly. Um, in August, I hadn't really moved very much, again, just a, a couple of uh, hundreds of uh, meters per second. Um, and then today, this was today's session, 100 kilograms, you can see that's it's quite a profound difference. Um, really moving 100 kilograms much, much faster. So actually, my, my pulling strength has, has 
improved significantly um, off the back of that. So that's really, really good news. Happy with that. Uh, it just means like, I am getting better. I am improving um, strength levels. It might not be the lift that I'm really interested in, but like it's not nothing. Um, generally getting better. And that's that's kind of mirrored when I look at... Um, this is relative peak power from jump testing. So again, a general upward trend. Um, after that bottom spike there right towards the, to the right side of the graph, I've used output to measure it compared to push. I spoke a couple of weeks ago about that they may measure um, relative power slightly differently. So that might explain why um, the subtle differences between the right hand side of the graph and left hand side of the graph. But basically if I measure everything after that, that sudden dip down, the trend is still to be progressively increasing. It's still kind of on an upward trend. It's a bit chaotic, a bit up and down, but the trend is still going upward. So yeah, if I take the squat out of the equation, pulling pulling strength is going up, jumping power is going up, and they're all good things to have. And they're, they're kind of ass assisting me becoming more athletic and, and getting better. Uh, and hopefully um, in the not too distant future, I'll see that transfer to, to squat strength as well. Um, from a body weight point of view, body composition point of view, um, I can't give you a specific update on the um, percentages of, of body fat uh, and, and, and muscle mass because I'm not access to the, uh, the resistance, uh, the bioelectric impedance machines at, at the gym, so I missed a few measurements there. But generally speaking, after I've had a sun dip, the, the weight has plateaued. And this is the rolling mean plateau. Um, and actually what, what that's reflecting is um, kind of quite undulating. So two or three days of weighing quite a bit less and then it'll kind of have a rebound and, and go back up again. Um, but generally speaking, it, it's, on, it's on the trend down. Um, I just depends on which day I catch uh, the presentation is whether the weight's trending down or whether it's trending up. Um, so like two or three days a week, um, I seem to be weighing heavier and then three or four days a week I'm weighing lighter and then obviously on a, on a seven day rolling average it balances it out. So that is it kind of break that little bit of a cycle. Um, just had a bit of a disruption to my daily routine moving back into to, to teaching on campus and just got to make sure that that 16 um, eight intermittent fasting, I, I find a way around working that, um, that fits. Um, my teaching schedule so again just a little bit of a disruption to, to the, the consistency of, of, of applying that 16-8 format but yeah back on that and, and it's working well for me at the minute and I'm sure I'll see in the next kind of two or three days that kind of undulation kind of even itself out and um, continue that downward trend so in, in other news then related to that what I've really noticed is um a, a change in kind of muscle health so what i'm finding is a lot of tightness uh, quads are tight cam calves are tight hamstrings are tight groins are tight so really having to spend a bit more time managing soft tissue and i used to say this to athletes all the time you've got to kind of deal with your soft tissue you've got to manage it yourself front roll stretch dog ball into into kind of some trigger points um and I followed follow my own advice here. I haven't listened to my own advice and I let it get to a point where it was starting to become uncomfortable. So my patella tendons are particularly sore, a lot kneeling down. Um, so that might be affecting my squatting. So I can squat and it, it's not painful to squat. I'm not restricted in movement, but it's uncomfortable. So it might be kind of limiting how, how much force I can apply and then therefore I'm not seeing the, the kind of strength numbers that I'd like to. So... Yeah, next next couple of weeks is to, to build some routine and some habits around doing a bit more stretching and foam rolling and, and, and trigger point work and, and stay on top of muscle health and then also keep you on top of it and not letting it degrade to a point where it's affecting my quality of movement, range of movement and, and strength and power. Um, so that's just kind of another message. Again, especially the older you get, the more you need to do that. So yeah, that's uh, this week's update and hopefully people will enjoy that and speak to you next time.